بسم اللہ الحمد للہ والصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول اللہ و اعلیٰ علیہ وصحاب اجمعین مابات بنود باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربش رحلی صدری و یسلی عمری وحل العہد من لسانی یفقہ و قولی ایوری ون ویلکم ٹو میس اکنا کنونشن ٹوینٹی نائنٹین السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ارلی مارننگ ایز وی سی سیٹرڈے ویک اینڈ So inshallah more people may be joining us when i was assigned this topic the seven habits of a highly successful dai the very first thought of mine it went to an ayah in the quran and that ayah is from surah ahzab surah 33 ayah number 21 if i were you i would also write the notes inshallah it's a good habit there may be a quiz i'm not sure yeah farhan <laughs> Yeah, we'll see inshallah. Okay. Yeah, there would be Q&A in the last 15, 20 or maybe half an hour. So feel free, any questions inshallah in the Q&A session. So that ayah that I was reminded of is Surah Ahzab, Surah 33, ayah number 21. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing to all of us, He's saying, A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِّمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهُ كَثِيرًا So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that in the person of Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have the best example to follow. For those who believe in Allah in the last day and remembers Allah much. So anytime when we speak about a successful family, successful Muslim, successful Muslim Ummah, successful Da'i, first and foremost, we have to look into the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I have about seven points, but today as a bonus, I will add three more habits, inshallah. Right? How is that? <laughs> inshallah. So the first and foremost habit that according to me that is a deal breaker for any relationship, any action, any interaction is the habit of having a strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know many a times when I give khutbas for marriage or counseling for the couples, I always mention to them that if both the couples or the, if the husband and the wife, if they have a strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they know that each other's uh, responsibilities, if they know that how did the Prophet dealt in his married life, if they have a strong connection, then the rest of the chips, they fall in the right place. As simple as that. Same thing when we are dealing with family, same thing when we are dealing with anyone. Once we have strong connection, all the things in, will fall into place. So that's the first and the foremost advice that for me and for you and the first and the most important habit is to have that strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many a times we may have heard from the Prophet Sirah. So there is an authentic narration in which it is related that the Prophet used to spend nights, long nights, he used to spend praying, standing up to such an extent that his feet used to swell. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she asked the Prophet, your sins are forgiven, why do you have to pray for so long? I'm just paraphrasing. And the Prophet said, I want to be a grateful servant. So his strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now we can see the results of it. So a strong connection is like 100% octane, perhaps. So if we want to have a dawa mobile, we need to have a really pure fuel into it pure gasoline into it and I would say that strong connection with Allah is that pure fuel, the pure gasoline. Many a times we emphasize so much about so many skills, so many habits but if the strong connection is not there, that means the other skills may not have as much value, they may not be as much blessings, our intention may, may be somewhere else, not to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the first and the foremost that I would advise myself and all of you is to inculcate that habit. That means revolving all of our activities around the five daily prayers, number one. Number two, waking up for the tahajjud prayer, the night prayer. 
So this is an optional prayer. So waking up for the tahajjud prayer as much as possible, yes, even in the convention, so we can establish that connection and, and that uh, the recharging of our faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second important habit is to always align all of our activities with the mission that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to every single Muslim and to the Muslim ummah in general. And you may be thinking, and I'm going to ask you this question. According to the Quran, according to the Sunnah, what do you think is the prime mission that every single prophet, they, were, they came for their people? There we go, mashallah, right? It's a dawa workshop, so mashallah. To deliver the message of Islam, to invite people to the creator and not to the creation. No, I don't have to connect it, yeah. It's a word document, I don't want to, I don't think you want to see the word document up there. So that is the prime mission. Doesn't matter any prophet, any messenger in the history of humanity. Yes, they used to help out the poor, the needy, the orphans, the widows. They used to justice in the society. But if there is one sentence, we can define every single prophet, every single messenger, is that their mission, their life mission was to invite people to the worship of the creator and not the creation. So a Quranic ayah that came to my mind with this mission is in Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, ayah number 143. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing to all of us, He's saying, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَتَى لِتَكُونُوا شُحَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا And the ayah continues. So the translation is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you are an ummah justly balanced, that you become witnesses to humanity. The way the messenger of Allah was a witness over you. So it's important, you know, when I came here last night from my home in Skokie, Morton Grove to the convention, I had the mission or my goal, my objective is to come over here with my family, enjoy the bazaar, socialize, meet with our fellow Muslims and also come and deliver this talk. So anything which I'm going to do, it is going to align towards this, this talk and other talks and other activities over here. So in the same way, when you go to school, when you go to work, anything that we do, there is always a, a, a destination that we have in mind. And the goal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigned to all of us is to invite humanity to the worship of the creator and not the creation. So when we look into this aspect, it's really important for us that a, a brother by the name of Asad, so he wanted to take his family in the last summer to a vacation. And he called me before he went that I'm taking my family to Alaska. I said, okay, Alhamdulillah, may Allah keep you safe in the plane, bring you back safe. But he said, I'm not going in the plane. Really? Alaska driving all the way for her? It takes a long time. You have to drive all the way west and north and transpass all of Canada and then go into Alaska. It's a long drive. He said, the mission of our family is not just to go there and enjoy the weather in Alaska. Alaska was 80 degrees at that time. Do you guys remember it? It was 80 or something, it was like hit 90 degrees. So he said my mission and the mission of that family, a southern family, is to make sure that on the way we want to stop at small towns, small cities, state by state, city by city, to convey the message of Islam, the non-Muslims. And he took brochures, he took copies of the Quran, the one minute cards, so that was his mission. So he was aligning his vacation, the family time, the quality time. They want to have enjoyment and the driving, but along with that, they also want to make sure they convey the message of Islam to the people who, who they were going and meeting. So a second important habit for all of us is to align our interactions, our actions with anybody, with the prime mission that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. 
You know, many a times when we hear about the Islamophobia, when we hear about the misconceptions, the hate attacks, the verbal attacks, a thing that comes to my mind is, yes, we blame them, but we blame also us because if they are ignorant, perhaps I have not done my job to educate them. So a single phrase which I have for Islamophobia is, Islamophobia is nothing but their reaction to our inaction. Did you get that? Islamophobia is their reaction to our inaction. Any physicians here in the room? Mashallah, one, two, okay. Suppose if you don't treat the patient and if the patient's health becomes bad and worse, close to dying, obviously the, the family is going to ask me and you or the doctors, that you guys had the ability, you have uh, the treatment, the medication, the diagnosis. Why didn't you help the patient, my family member? Because if we have the ability to educate other people, if we withheld that education, that enlightenment, that guidance, the Quran, the Sunnah the, uh, the, of Islam provides, that means they also have the obligation to research, but we have not done our job. So Islamophobia is nothing but their reaction to our inaction. So that's the second important habit of a highly successful da'i. By definition or by default, every single Muslim should be a da'i. So da'i means a person who conveys, invites people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I'm going to ask you this question, what Quranic ayah comes to my mind that speaks about that aspect? Anybody? Go ahead. MashaAllah. So Surah Nahal, Surah 16, Ayah number 125, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing to all of us, He's saying, Rabbika That invite all to the way of Allah with wisdom and good preaching, and converse with them in ways which are best and most gracious. So it's important that that is uh, the prime mission that Allah has given to all the Muslims by default we should be da'is. And these are the attributes, the, the qualities and the habits of highly successful da'is. So that's number two. Number three would be having sound knowledge of Islam and the evidence why Islam is true. So I'm the director of Gain Peace. On behalf of Gain Peace, we have a telephone line where non-Muslims can call us and ask us any questions. So a brother, a non-Muslim brother, he keep on calling us from, from Calgary, Canada. And these are some of his questions. And we can take these questions if you want to ask the same questions in the Q&A. One of his first question is that what does Islam say about evolution? According to him, some scholars say that, you know, evolution happened, then Allah created the humans. According to some Muslim scholars, evolution happened the whole way that the science book says. Then according to some scholars, no evolution happened, Allah created the species the way they are, then there is microevolution. And this person, this non-Muslim, he did his research and he wanted to know what is the right perspective of Islam according to me, according to Islam, the Quran about evolution. Then one of his question was that, you know, Christians believe in God, Hindus and Jews and Sikhs and Muslims, how do we know that your God is the right God or your concept of God is the right concept of God? His question, the marriages of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His question was, did the Prophet worship idols? Because idol worship was prominent in that time. How come he did not worship his uncles, you know, people around him, they worship idols. So these were some of his questions. So a highly successful da'i should have the top 50, maybe the top 100 questions people may be asking and know the answers with evidence. The evidence has to be from the Quran, from the Sunnah, from history, from logic, from science, it has to cover all the bases as much as possible. We received one call from a person. He identified himself as John. John is a generic name for a Christian. 
So he said that I am a Christian and my question is there are so many religions out there how do we know that your faith is the right faith? We Christians say that our faith is the right faith, our way of life is the right way of life. How do you say and how do you prove that your way of life is the right way of life? Means Islam is the truth. So Alhamdulillah, our volunteer, he gave him a four step answer. After the response, Alhamdulillah, this person, John, identifying himself as a Christian, he said, I'm fully satisfied with that answer. How do I become a Muslim? Alhamdulillah, on the telephone, this person calling as a Christian, asking one tie-breaking, deal-breaking question. How do you prove that Islam is the right faith? And we can go over that in the Q&A session, inshallah. He embraced Islam on the phone. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Then we were curious. You know, John, where are you calling from? And John said, I'm calling from Karachi, Pakistan. Surprise, Farhan. Of all, the, you know, in Pakistan itself has 200 million Muslims approximately. And he found our number and he called all the way here. Allah guided him even through a long distance telephone line from Pakistan to Chicago. So it's important that every Muslim by default we are da'is and we should know the answer. This is a simple question. Any non-Muslim should be asking this question that you say you are Muslims, how do you know Islam is the right faith? So in the Q&A session, inshallah, we will try to go over that. All right, so what is the next habit? So this habit was good and sound knowledge of Islam. So let me just give one, one evidence from the Quran. I will just do the translation. This is in Surah Yusuf, Surah 12, Ayah number 108 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the translation is this that say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is my way I invite to Allah with clear knowledge with clear evidence me and those who follow me which is all of us and I am not one of the mushriki so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that when we convey Islam we should do it with good knowledge and with evidence and that's the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do it if we are going to follow him by default, we should be following him. We should also do with clear knowledge and good evidence. So that was number three. So number four is a no-brainer. Early to bed, early to rise. Yeah? Seems like a common sense, but it's hard for all of us when there is so much bombardment of information. We want to check our Facebook with our phone in our hand, lying on the pillow. Half an hour goes by, Instagram, Snapchat, how many likes did we get on YouTube, on subscribers? I mean, come on, I do it, we all do it, but it's really important that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you know, there are so many wonderful ahadiths. One of them comes to my mind. Abu Barzakh radiallahu ta'ala, who he reported, that he, the Prophet وسلم, would dislike sleeping before Isha or talking after Isha. That means a sunnah of the Prophet, after he used to pray the Isha, he used to go to sleep. And Isha is not at 2 a.m. It's not delaying the Isha at 2 a.m. You know, just for the sake of you know, having a loophole. No, Isha at the right time. Earlier the better. And then going to sleep and then waking up in the morning. You know, you guys, and I was surprised when I read this. Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, he, used to, he wakes up at like 3.45 a.m. in the morning. The CEO of AOL, he wakes up like 4.45 a.m. in the morning. So many of the highly uh, achievers, the achievers in the secular world, almost all of them, they wake up around 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning and they start their work. So just from the secular point of view, our battery is fully charged. You know, like some of you may be charging your phone or in your hotels you charge your phone. In the morning it's fully charged, the battery, the phone. In the same way, our battery spiritually, psychologically, biologically, we are also fully charged. So in the charge battery, if we just 
sleep all the way up until you know whatever time that means we are losing that time so one more hadith of the prophet ﷺ is that the prophet prayed to allah to to grant abundance to the ummah in the early mornings so he said oh allah bless my nation in their early mornings this is sunnah ibn majah's collection authentic narration so the prophet is blessing the muslim ummah that when they wake up when they wake up early and start doing the work there's immense blessings in it so going to bed early and then waking up early this is the sunnah of the prophet even from the secular point of view this is the best habit the best practice for all of us to follow i know with the bazaar today with the entertainment all of that it may not be easy but in our baseline as our life becomes normal going back what not it's a good habit it's a good habit for all of us to inculcate number 5th is having good communication skills show of hands how many of you are part of the toastmasters you may be thinking what is you know toastmasters mashallah so toast man none of you that's just one person in the whole room one okay fine good mashallah <laughs> two people three okay toastmasters is a secular club that teaches people like you and me how to become good communicators we have the best message we have to become the best sharers of the message you know when sales people when marketing people when they call us at annoying times when we are eating dinner or knocking at the door or some shopping centers or at the bazaar when people want to sell something they have a product now they want to entice us in buying that product looking into that product at least a potential customer they look when they look at us so we have the best message that means we have to become the best deliverers of the message so communication skills is not just the speaking skills communication skills also involves listening skills communication skills also involves what not to say as much as what to say do you agree with that because sometimes when we say too much or the wrong things uh, people may have more questions compared to coming close to our message they may be go going further from the message two years ago i was at the long island islamic center new york gave the juma khutbah did the juma prayer walking out with my host to the parking as we were walking we were about to cross the sidewalk a lady kept on coming at us literally walking with a fast pace she stopped in front of both of us me and brother shahid farooqi and she asked this question i was inside listening to the friday sermon that you gave i am a non muslim i live across the masjid i have a few questions i said alhamdulillah i said sister what are your questions we are here to help you so on the sidewalk the conversation started and she was say you know i heard about uh, your prophet muhammad peace be upon him that he received revelation what is the authenticity of the quran that he received what about you know his multiple marriages what about people have the misconceptions about jihad and sharia uh, uh, violence please tell me i am open my i want to listen alhamdulillah about half an hour on the sidewalk of this masjid we were conversing and some muslim brothers and sisters they were just listening to us at the end of the half an hour she asked how do i now become a muslim alhamdulillah so at this point allah guided her and she wanted to become a muslim and i was about to help her to recite the shahada just before that recitation of the shahada a muslim brother who was listening so there were many muslims they were excited mashallah dawa conversation people making the videos and they were about to record the shahada a muslim brother he interrupted and he said my dear sister before you become muslim and recite the shahada that the the testimony of faith do know that once you become a muslim you cannot go back 
if you go back then this will happen to you right and they would be, brother what is wrong with you come on communication skills what to say what not to say even when we say something when to say the right way the right packaging the right evidences the the right occasion the right choice of words the right tone all of them are equally important so having superior communication skills not just for the sake of dawa communication skills with your spouses with your children when you go back to work when you go back to schools and college communication skills is one of the important blessing that allah has given so we muslims we should be masters in communication skills we have the best message we need to become the best deliverers of the message and the best deliverers of the message you can go to a community college and take some classes go to those masters take some classes in your juma khutbas in your weekly halakhas try to have assign different topics different speakers do evaluation these are the good points these are the areas of improvement you are saying this many ahs and ums and you knows and you annoying right it's annoying when i hear it when you hear it the very first day when i went to the toastmasters meeting i had to do my ice breaker speech okay those who are from the toastmasters This is the very first speech that you gave to the toastmaster in the audience in that meeting and this is supposed to be you are introducing yourself to the toastmaster club After I was done with the speech an evaluator came so for every speech there was an evaluator so a person came to evaluate my speech and they said you know Sabil all these things you did really good you mastered it all these things you need to improve but the biggest improvement that you need to have is that you have so many filler words and that lady she counted 44 of them i was saying according to her you know and so and you like all of these filler words the more filler words that we have it takes away from the impact of our message So I hope and pray that all of you are souls in joining Toastmasters. Go to Toastmaster or Toastmasters.com. Once you go there, there is a button. It says Find Your Club. Just click on it. Put in your zip code. It will give like literally tens and hundreds of clubs, like in the 50 mile radius, five mile radius. There may be many. They are all over the U.S., all over the world. Even Mecca, Medina has Toastmaster Club. what 4 years ago a muslim brother by the name of muhammad riyaz or somebody he became the world champion of public speaking the very first muslim to achieve that honor alhamdulillah and you can watch his speech so that is having good communication skills is one of the habits of a successful dai a successful muslim the next one which i have and this is also really easy one is to have the credibility in the society do all of you recall from your seera from your sunday school from the basic knowledge of islam that we all have that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he called people to mount safa and he asked them an important question would you believe if i say there's a army behind the mountain on what did they all say they said yes we believe your sadiq an alamin You are the truthful and the honest. Not a single time the Prophet ever broke his promise or telling a lie. Always upheld the truth and kept his promises. So he had the credibility in the society. Before he was made a dai, a prophet, and a messenger, he was a person who was the most truthful and the most honest person. So having credibility with our neighbors, with our colleagues at work, with our classmates. anybody any non muslim muslim should be the one who should be looked at with awe that these are the muslims i have been going to south america guyana anybody from guyanese background so i have been to guyana many many times this is north of brazil for dawa programs so when i went there they mentioned a story to me and they said there are many muslims 100000 muslims in that part of the world they said a muslim brother was driving 
and he drove over the speed limit. I mean, we all do many times. He drove over the speed limit and the police officer caught him and about to give him the ticket. So when the police officer came to the window of the car, the police officer looked at the person, the Muslim brother with the beard, with the kufi and he said, you are a Muslim and you're driving fast. Can you believe that? Muslims in South America, especially in Guyana, they're looked up as the most credible people, the honest people, good businessmen. Islam is spreading so fast, just like it was spreading in Indonesia and in Malaysia way back. So they're taken as the best people in that society, even now in the 21st century. So for us to have an impact, for us, for people to listen to us, you know, why would a person listen to me if they know that I'm lying and cheating and, you know, breaking my promises, not coming on time to the meetings, anything that they take for granted, I'm not doing it. Why would they listen to me? As a student, they may not listen to me. As a neighbor, they may not listen. As a colleague, they may not listen. But having the credibility is like a magnet for the people. And obviously, the Prophet was the best, and we are supposed to imitate the Prophet. May Allah make it easy for us. And let me wrap up really quickly. What time do we have for her? Five more minutes. Okay, we have five more minutes. Let me just wrap up quickly, inshallah. The next one that I have is time management habit. Having a good time management habit, there is an important quote, and we all know this that time flies. But that's only the first part of the quotation. The second part of the quotation is, yes, time does fly, but you are the pilot. Make sense? So time is in our control. If somebody says that, you know what, I don't have enough uh, time in my 24 hours, I always remind them, the Prophet wasallam. he was the busiest person in the history of humanity. He was a prophet, he was a messenger, the best of to many neighbors, he was a father, he was a husband to many wives, uh, he was a military leader, uh, he went on expeditions, anything, all the things that a person of credibility, of impact and activism do, he used to do all of them par excellence. And he used to have the best time management skills. That means praying on time, having due justice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving quality time to his family, quality time to the Sahaba, to his children, the daughter especially. He balanced all of them with the proper time management. So if anyone says that I don't have enough uh, time, that means we have to have the right priorities and the right time. All of you obviously you heard about Tim Cooks and Warren Buffett and especially Elon Musk. <laughs> The one single denominator that every single human in the history of humanity, Allah gave equally to every single person. It's not the health, it's not the wealth, it's nothing except time. So why is it that the Elon Musk and the Tim Cooks and the Warren Buffets and the Bill Gates of the world, using the same amount of time, they have achieved so much in the secular world. We have same amount of time, 24 hours. When Plus, we have the blessings of the Prophet being as the best role model. So that is one of the important habits that we Muslims, we need to inculcate. There are so many books which are out there. There are so many books, so many resources. Even the seerah itself is the best resource for us, Quran and seerah of the Prophet, for us to do the time management habits. And last but not the least, there are so many. I'm skipping many in the Q&A, inshallah, we can bring would be having proper health. Having proper health. If my health and your health is compromised, we are lying down in some hospital or in our bed somebody is taking care of us, we are not able to walk, we are not able to talk, we are not able to you know, converse with people because of some sickness that can, could have been prevented. That means we are not doing justice to the health, the body, the resources that Allah has given to us. So just a show of hand, how many of us we exercise every day about half an hour? MashaAllah, MashaAllah, good. You are my motivation now. <laughs> yeah, she is your motivation. MashaAllah. 
You know, it's important, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he emphasized so much about having good, uh, healthy eating habits and physical health. And there are so many narrations, just one, I'm going to end with that, then we'll open the floor for Q&A. This is an authentic narration in Imam Tirmidhi's collection, in which the Prophet said that the worst vessel a person can fill would be the stomach. If you have to eat, then eat small portions. You know, that's what AMA also says, right? All the physicians here, American Medical Association also says exactly the same thing, that we need to take small bites, small portions and break it up and chew for a long time. Uh, don't drink water or, you know, Coke or Pepsi as we are eating. So this is important. So eat small portions. Then the Prophet said, if you have to eat more, eat one third. So one third is not the minimum, one third is the maximum. Did we all get that? When the Prophet said eat one third, so one third for the food, one third for the liquid and then leaving one third just empty. So just running down with the habits, right? Just naming the habits as a summary. First and foremost, a strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once we have it, everything else inshallah will fall into place. Second thing, aligning every single activity that we do with inviting humanity to Allah. Number three, having good and sound knowledge with evidence. Number four, early to bed and early to rise. Number five, having good communication skills. Number six, having credibility in the society. Number seven, being a, a proper time management skills. And number eight is having good physical health and good eating habits. So I hope and pray when we inculcate even some of them, inshallah, we will find the barakah, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will find out inshallah, our health would be better spiritually, psychologically, biologically, we would be better. And once that happens, inshallah, will be better communicators, better ambassadors of Islam and with Allah's blessings, inshallah, they would be given the hidayah and inshallah, the world would be a different place, a positive place. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Jazakallahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.